Humanity has always been fascinated by the phenomenon of life. Today, we know much about the biological systems that govern life. We've learned how to study nature down to atomic precision, and we harness this knowledge to improve our health. But what if we could engineer or even build biological systems from scratch? Scientists are pushing the boundaries of design, engineering and biology to synthesize life from single molecules to living cells. This emerging field called synthetic biology has grabbed the attention of the world's biggest innovators. By turning nature's processes into life-saving technologies, they are testing the limits of biology itself. DNA, the core of every living organism. It makes a plant grow, an animal adapt to its environment, and it's what makes us different from each other. Scientists have spent decades understanding our living cells, experimenting with our DNA and the base code that makes us, us. But what if we could rewrite that code and program living organisms like computer software. We can do this through synthetic biology. Research and discovery have so far been based on reading and editing genomes. But now we can take things beyond that. We have the power of writing and creating genomes, which allows to build molecules of life and living cells from the ground up. With synthetic biology, we can design novel proteins, create biofactories, and develop life-saving cell therapies. Synthetic biology is a really new field, um, and it's a convergence of kind of engineering design and essentially molecular biology. And so it's bringing together those disciplines into a field where you're thinking about designing and constructing biological systems the skyrocketing interest in synthetic biology is reflected in numbers. In 2021, synthetic biology startups raised $18 billion, which is nearly the total of all previous years since 2009. Cambridge is one of the biggest biotech hubs in the UK and home to many companies pioneering synthetic biology. The Reciprocal Space team met with Michael Chen, the CEO of Nuclera, a Cambridge startup developing a unique synthetic biology approach called bioprinting. It is our intention with our eProtein desktop bioprinter in order to make proteins accessible and ultimately make biology accessible. Most of us associate proteins with food, but in biological terms, they are one of the basic molecules of life. Proteins are like molecular machines. They are involved in nearly all biological processes, from the smallest bacteria to highly evolved animals such as humans. Life turns the instruction code, DNA, into an intermediate messenger called messenger RNA, and then takes that and translates that into proteins. Okay. That's how all life operates. What we do is effectively hijack that process. The protein bioprinter developed by Nuclera uses DNA as a bioink. 
prints out multiple prototypes of a protein and allows to choose the best possible protein variant to then use for drug trials or research. When you look at technologies throughout the centuries, right, it's really the, the key thing is to have those workflows be more, more and more accessible. And that's what drives costs down and ultimately drives innovation. It empowers those who are bold enough, brave enough to design new proteins. Protein design is an exciting area of synthetic biology. Humans have 20,000 genes that code for proteins in our bodies. Yet protein design technology allows to create proteins that don't exist anywhere in nature. It's, it's really quite remarkable, I think. So protein design is going through a massive kind of renaissance, if you like, at the moment. Um, and not only completely synthetic proteins that don't exist in the world, but are obviously based on the parts of proteins that we know that do exist. Um, and right through to, you know, highly engineered enzymes for, you know, for cleaving plastic. You know, I think the proteins are so, so, so important. And I think now we have an opportunity to redesign, you know, proteins at will. If designing proteins could be so powerful, imagine what designing living cells could do for human health. BitBio, another rapidly growing synthetic biology company based in Cambridge, are taking biosynthetic design to the next level by using their cell reprogramming approach to create all types of human cells for research, drug discovery and medicine. The way that I define synthetic biology is um, really engineering of biology or the processes that have been used over the last you know, 30, 40 years. Um, they're all based on engineering of uh, lower species like bacteria, yeast, uh, and they've given us wonderful things like insulin, for example, or um, biologic drugs. Uh, and, um, and now uh, th this repertoire is, is being extended to non-medical applications. You've, you've heard about spider silk being created, fragrances for, for perfumes, etc. The, the step change um, that, uh, that is happening at the moment uh, is that these principles uh, of engineering biology are also applied um, to human cells. BitBio's technology can reliably reprogram pluripotent stem cells, the cells from which every human emerges, into a chosen mature cellular identity with consistency and scale. Now, cell programming is really uh, taking a completely different view uh, on, on a cell. I mean, it's more like treating them as a piece of hardware, um, if you realize that the nucleus uh, is like the hard drive, it's read-only memory, it stores the information in the DNA. And of course the genes that are uh, encoded in the DNA then interact with each other and they create what's called gene regulatory networks. So these are the program modules that uh, every cell has. What makes the difference between a brain cell and, let's say, a skin cell is the, 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 the active part uh, of, uh, of the program. Why was it called the genetic code? Because it codes for something. It provides the instruction set for our living systems. But so you're, you're going to, to reprogram cells or you're going to bring in you know, designed DNA circuits or even genomes. Um, to create cells that have particular human-defined functions, and that's kind of what the field is all about. So, how do we, how do we, you know, engineer living systems? One really astounding example of this is the engineering of immune cells to recognize cancers, uh, and that has given us an unprecedented cure of late-stage blood cancers and that we didn't have before. Um, and um, I think this is just the beginning. What is the language of DNA and how it's expressed as a language? If we manage to understand that and get to the bottom of that particular paradigm, that would be at the core of life, if you like, and how we write life.